होप आप सभी को हमारे प्रोग्राम्स पसंद आ रहे होंगे और आपको मालूम होगा कि अगर आप भी हमारे चैनल में पार्टिसिपेट करना चाहते हैं देन यू कैन राइट टू अस एट एडवांटेज मास्टर माइंड एट जी मेल डॉट कॉम बट बिफोर दैट प्लीज डू नॉट फॉरगेट टू शेयर लाइक एंड सब्सक्राइब टू आर चैनल आज की सीरीज है टेल मी वाई ऑन द चैप्टर फिजिकल एंड केमिकल चेंजेस विच इज ब्रॉट टू यू बाय सुपर टैलेंटेड एंड एक्सट्रीमली ब्रिलियंट सेवन ग्रेडर्स ड्रीमिंग विथ कॉन्फिडेंस एंड ऑलवेज एक्सेलिंग बी इट स्पोर्ट्स म्यूजिक डांस और स्टडीज वी हैव अ सुपर स्टर्न एंड अ रियल परफॉर्मर एंड लीडर एलिना तहरीन एज द मास्टर एमरीना तहरीन ओ माई गुडनेस I am so tired of drying these clothes since last two days and I wanted to use them for a function tomorrow. It is so difficult to dry clothes in this type of weather. Do you know why clothes take a longer time to dry on a rainy day? As we all know, our atmosphere contains moisture. During the rainy season, the level of moisture increases and also the sun is hidden behind the clouds thus bringing down the temperature. Whereas on a sunny day, the temperature is high and also the rate of evaporation is high and hence the clothes dry faster we all learn why clothes take longer time to dry on a rainy day now let me take you through another concept i'm so excited do you know why because next week we're going to singapore for my birthday great isn't it i'm so happy but i'm not happy about one thing because i can't take my favorite dresses these are all my favorites but my mom says not to pack these because it is going to be really hot in singapore so the best clothes to carry are the cotton ones why should we wear cotton clothes in summer cotton is known as the best fabric for hot weather because cotton can absorb sweat more easily the sweat is not only absorbed by the fabric but also is evaporated easily from the fabric thus leaving the body cool hey all i'm back singapore was great When returning, we took a detour to Titi Koren. As we all know, Titi Koren is a place in Tamil Nadu, India. As we were en route, we saw endless fields of salt. And the most interesting thing that I found was that till date, salt is obtained from sea water in this very traditional way. And Titi Koren has been been doing it since time immemorial. But do you know why large shallow pans are used used rather than small deep pans for drying salt large shallow pans allow more sunlight to be absorbed by the water molecules which are at the surface larger the evaporating surface faster the rate of evaporation it takes 15 to 20 days to dry a batch of salt in summer and then it is further taken down for purification and drying bye they say quiet waters run deep well that is so true in case of jayan k our mastermind for today he is so humble and sober that you may mistake him for an ordinary guy next door a person who is so good in studies games music and more he is the real star in the making jayan k have you ever been to pondicherry my family visit this place very often there is some kind of aura about this place also because it is eco friendly people wear natural fabrics printed with natural colors they cycle to walk or share their ride and eat food that is cooked in traditional style almost every home has a fire hydrant oven and their utensils are made up of clay they will pot water in terracotta vessels do you know what is so special about this earthen pots why does the water kept in the earthen pot become cool in summer but not the water kept in the steel or the plastic containers look i have an earthen pot a bottle of water now i am pouring the water in the earthen pot Because the minute holes in the earthen pot, this allows the outer layer of the water to come in the contact with the hot atmosphere, gain energy and evaporate. This evaporation of water produces a cooling effect. And if any, and if there is any heat energy generated inside, will again be used the process of evaporation. Hence, the water stored in the earthen pot tends to become cooler in summer. So the higher rate of evaporation, the cooler the water becomes. But in the steel or the plastic containers, do not allow the process of evaporation. Hence. the water stored in them becomes hotter and hotter now we'll move on to our next experiment do you know why 
carrying of sugar is a chemical change while dissolving of sugar is a physical change? Well, before answering this question, let us perform an experiment and find it out ourselves. Let us first set up with the dissolving of sugar experiment. Look, the things needed for this experiment. A steel container, a glass, bowl of sugar, a spoon, tissue paper, bottle of water and a gas stove. Take a vessel with some water. Let the water boil. Then dissolve a bowl of sugar. Keep stirring till all the sugar dissolves. Once the sugar solution has cooled down, then transfer the liquid into a glass and attach a thread or a stick to it. And also cover it with a tissue paper or a cloth. Observe what happens after a week. Now we will see that what happened after a week. We see that we get back the sugar crystals. Now we will move on to our next experiment that is charring of sugar. The things needed for this experiment is a gas stove, spoon, little sugar. Take a spoon of sugar and heat it over a gas stove gently. See, we see that first the sugar turns into yellow, then brown, then blackish brown liquid is formed. This process is known as charring of sugar. Now let us compare the two reactions. Dissolving of sugar, in this experiment, we see that we get back the sugar crystals. That means that's because it is a reversible reaction and no new substance is formed. Therefore, it is a physical change. Charring of sugar, in this experiment, we see that we get the new substance with the evolution of carbon dioxide and water vapor. Even if we keep it for many days, the reaction will not reverse. Therefore, it is a chemical change. Charring of sugar reminds me of respiration. Respiration is like charring. When it comes to the chemical reaction, though there are many other byproducts in respiration, but the chemical accounted in both these reactions. Are they both same? Let us examine the reactions very closely. Charring of sugar, in this reaction, sugar reacts with the oxygen of the surrounding air to form carbon dioxide and water vapor. With this reaction starts very slowly in the beginning of the heat in the form of bubbles. The reaction is c 2 h 22 o 11 that is sucrose plus 2 molecules of oxygen plus gives 2 molecules of carbon dioxide plus 11 molecules of water with energy. Now when we look at respiration we see that glucose reacts with the oxygen of the air and food is broken down into carbon dioxide and water with the liberation of energy. The reaction is c 6 h 2 o 6 that is glucose plus 6 molecules of oxygen gives 6 molecules of carbon dioxide plus 6 molecules of water with energy. Aren't they both same? What about photosynthesis? Is photosynthesis similar to respiration? Kindly write your answer in the comment below. We will let you know later. Thank you.